Welcome everyone to the first session of the day in the waterfall room. Um, I'm very excited to introduce you to this session, which is exploring Strimzy's implementation of rolling updates with Tina Solange. So with that, Tina, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, Kate. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining the session. My name is Kantima Selenge, but I go by Tina. Um, I work on uh, Red Hat MQ Streams, which is a data streaming platform based on Apache Kafka. So as part of my role, I work on Streamsy as well. Um, I, so in the past year, I worked on Streamsy's rolling updates. Uh, I spent quite some time working on that. So in this session, I'm excited to share what I've learned. Right. Um, so here's an overview of cluster operator and Kafka cluster it manages. Um, Kafka cluster is typically deployed with three or more broker nodes. And if you're running in craft mode, you typically also have three or more controller nodes. Um, as you know, the operator uh, deploys and manages all the resource needed for your Kafka cluster. Um, and that includes the rolling update for your Kafka cluster as well. So when you're doing rolling update for your Kafka cluster, um, it has to be done really carefully to avoid any impact on the cluster availability and client applications. Um, it can't be just left to Kubernetes, um, even though it, it does have a rolling restart feature because Kubernetes doesn't have the Kafka specific knowledge that it needs. So this brings us to Kafka Roller, uh, which is a component, uh, internal component of Streamsy that is responsible for coordinating the rolling restart for Kafka cluster. It uses various sources to get information about Kafka cluster to perform the updates with um, as minimal disruption as possible. So in this session, we're going to deep dive into Kafka roller component. Um, we'll be looking at uh, what triggers rolling update and how Kafka roller makes decisions, whether to restart the pod or not, and what kind of safety checks it does perform before restarting top pod um, to ensure a minimal impact on the cluster. And what happens after the rolling, after rolling restart, uh, like what so sort of outcomes we expect. And um, also Kafka Roller is a very complex component. Um, it works really well. However, it's not perfect. There are still things we could improve with it. So we'll look at some of the shortcomings of it as well. So Streamsy has a periodic reconciliation. Uh, we get, we get, uh, it gets triggered every two minutes by default. And this interval can be reconfigured using the Streamsy environment variable. Um, reconciliation not only gets triggered by the timer, but there are certain events that trigger the reconciliation as well. And Kafka Roller runs as part of this reconciliation process. So this is from high level how Kafka Roller works. Um, the first thing it does is order pods. Um, the restarting the pods in the right order is quite important. Um, there are different nodes with different roles and responsibilities. So which one you start first or last uh, has different kind of impact. It then uh, repeats the process of uh, determining the action for a pod and doing the safety checks and, and go, going ahead and taking the action. So this, these three steps are repeated process, um, um, which gets executed for each of the pods in the order. Um, another thing that Kafka Roller does is um, try recovering any unhealthy pods, um, which could result taking the action um, immediately without doing the safety checks. So we'll, we'll take a look at those scenarios as well later. And if the action fails for the pod, uh, we might have to repeat this process again for that pod as well. Um, so again, this could be repeated um, for each pod multiple times. And then at the end, we'll complete the reconciliation with uh, either success or failed result. OK, so let's walk through each of these steps. Uh, let's have a look how uh, Kafka Roller orders the pod. Um, so Kafka Roller always attempts to uh, restart the unready pods first, um, because like I said, it tries to recover the, the unhealthy pods first um, before doing anything else with it. 
Um, we also don't want to restart any of, the, any of the healthy parts in case they break as well. So this is why we do them first. And in craft, um, we also restart the controller parts first because um, without the quorum, brokers would not be able to operate correctly. And it's quite important that we operate in the quorum controller nodes first, make sure the quorum is healthy and stable before we do anything with the brokers. So first we put the unready controller parts, and then after that we put the controller parts. And the one of the controller parts will be the active controller or the quorum leader. And restarting the active controller uh, is potentially a destructive event because um, that would mean the brokers would need to reconnect and the new con uh, active controller need to be re-elected. Um, so this is why we want to do this at, at last. So we put the active controller at last of the uh, controller nodes. And then we put the unready broker pods and then the broker pods. And if you're running in zookeeper mode, uh, one of these broker is also the controller. So again, that controller would be uh, put to be restarted at last. OK, so when I say unready, ready, what does it really mean? Um, so this is basically Kubernetes readiness check, uh, which is based on the broker state. So when uh, Kafka node starts up, it transitions through different kinds of states, and it emits that state as a metric, which is called broker state. And if the broker state is um, equal, or run, equal or greater than running, that uh, means this uh, broker is ready. It just means it's ready to serve requests. Um, and it applies to both Zookeeper and Craft-based broker. And in Craft mode, you can also have a node that is both controller and a broker, um, which we call a mixed node or combined node. And this check also applies to a mixed node as well. Um, and then we also collect the broker state metrics and expose that by using Kafka agent, uh, which is a Java agent that we run with the Kafka nodes. And for craft controllers, we all have a different um, readiness check. So the controller part is considered to be ready um, if the controller process is listening on the part defined in controller listener names configuration. So this is the part that brokers use to communicate with the quorum. OK, so let's take a look at um, how we determine the action for a part. Um, as I said earlier, we always deal with the unready parts first to recover any of the unhealthy parts. Um, so there are different, various different scenarios why parts might be unready. So we'll look at those different scenarios and see that uh, what kind of uh, decision Kafka Roller makes with it. So first, um, the uh, Kafka Roller checks if the uh, part has been in unresolv unresolvable state for some time. Uh, and this is indicated by one of these uh, Kubernetes pod status or container state. So if the pod is in any of these state, it considers it to be stuck. So let's see the flow, what we do with that. Um, so we check if the pod is stuck or not. And if it's not stuck, um, the, we're just going to give it a chance to become ready. So we'll just do some waiting. And this wait has a timeout. We'll talk about that more later. And this is just to give the chance, um, give chance to the pod to become ready in case it was just started. Uh, it might just need a bit more time to start serving before it starts serving requests. And if it is stuck, um, the next thing it checks is if this pod is out of date, meaning that if this pod is running with the desired version, desired configuration, if, is there any like pending update to be applied to this pod? And if it's not out of date, so it is running with the latest, uh, the desired version, then we're going to immediately fail the reconciliation here. This is because there's no really point of restarting this pod because when it gets restarted, it's probably going to end up in the same state. And we also want to avoid restarting other pods as well in case they also end up in that um, broken state. So this is why we failed the reconciliation. 
And then if it is out of date, if there's any pending updates, then we're going to go ahead and immediately restart the pod. Um, so this is because, for example, if the pod was stuck because um, of, you know, because you misconfigured the node affinity, for example, and now you fix the configuration. So you want this pod to be restarted with the right configuration now. So next up, uh, pod performing log recovery. So we said uh, we'll give the pod uh, a chance to become ready by doing some wait. And um, after that, we check if the pod's still not ready. And if it is still not ready, then we're going to check the broker state and see if it's doing log recovery. Um, so when broker starts up, and if it ha previously had unclean shutdown, the log recovery process gets triggered to make sure the log is in a good state, it's not in a corrupted um, state. So this is why, why it does that. So if it's not doing log recovery, there's nothing to do. So we're just going to continue with the rest of the process. But if it is doing log recovery, um, there's not much else Kafka Roller can do other than wait, because um, we don't want to restart this part in case, you know, when the read starts and the, the, it's going to do the log recovery again. And before it finishes, we might restart again and we could end up in this loop. Um, so what it would do is it would apply some delay and then retry this part and wait again to see if it finished uh, doing the log recovery until we reach the max attempt. So the max attempt is set to 10 in StreamZ. And if we do reach the max attempt, then uh, we're going to fail the reconciliation immediately. Um, so by failing the reconciliation, we also notify the human operator because if the reconciliation, reconciliation keeps failing because of rock recovery, um, the human operator might have to intervene and investigate uh, the, what the problem is. And it's really hard to determine how long this log recovery might take. It might take minutes, it might take hours. So the log recovery progress gets logged in the operator. You would typically see this warning log message, which has the remaining logs and segments left to recover. So if you see these numbers decreasing, uh, maybe just log recovery is taking longer than usual, or like just maybe slow, but it's progressing, then you might just have to give it some time um, however, if you don't see these numbers decreasing at all, then you know something might not be right with the logs or the disk. So you might have to go and investigate that. So the next thing is um, the pod unresponsive to connections. Um, so this uh, this check is done actually for not just on ready pods, but also for ready pods. So for any pod, we always check if the if we can connect to the pod or not, and we do that by initializing Kafka admin client. And if the connection is not successful, we need to restart this part immediately. And this, this is because um, the potentially clients cannot, can't connect to this part as well. So we need to like try fix this as quickly as possible. But uh, if we can connect, then great. We just continue with the rest of the process. So that was the various uh, scenarios that why pod might be unready and what Kafka roller does with it. Uh, for ready pods, we also need to determine if we need to restart the pod or not. So the main triggers for running restart for ready pods, um, if if it if the broker TLS certificate is renewed, so the, broker, uh, the Kafka nodes need to be restarted to start using the new certificate. And if the pod and StreamC pod site is annotated with manual rolling update, so this is how the user um, triggers rolling update manually. And if there is any change in the Kafka custom resource detected, so this change can be, for example, Kafka configuration um, that cannot be updated dynamically. If it can be updated dynamically, uh, Kafka Roller would just use the Kafka admin API to uh, to update the configuration. However, if that configuration update repeatedly fails, then as a last, as a last resort, we will also go ahead and restart the pod. And then maybe Kafka version has changed and or container image is updated. So this is not the exhaustive list. Um, there are various different changes uh, in the Kafka custom resource that can trigger the rolling update. Right, so we determined the action, and next we need to do the safe, 
we need to do the, the safety checks. Um, there are two safety conditions, uh, Kafka roller checks. Um, availability check is for brokers and mixed nodes if you're running in craft. Um, so this ensures that the replication count of topic partition um, does not fall below the uh, configured meaning single replicas. Um, this is really important because uh, producer clients with Excel settings won't be able to produce anymore. And also consumer clients won't be able to commit offsets because it produces, it does that by producing to topic uh, with Excel settings as well. And then we do also quorum health check for craft controllers and also for mixed nodes. And this ensures that majority of the controller nodes are up and running and also have the up-to-date metadata. Okay, so let's take some let's take a look at some examples of availability check, what it does. Um, so let's say I have three broker nodes um, and broker zero is the partition leader for my top partition. And in here, broker two, as you can see, is fallen behind. So it's not part of the ISR list anymore. So the in-sync replica list. So if I was to restart broker one, that would mean the, the ISR count will fall below the configured min ISR of two. So I can't restart broker one in this case. Again, uh, if we were to restart broker zero, that cannot be done because broker two is fallen behind, the same thing. Uh, however, we can restart broker two because it's already not part of the ISR list. So it will not impact the replica count um, against the main ISR replica of two. And if my topic partition is replicated across all my brokers, then any of the broker can be restarted safely. Okay, so the craft controller quorum. Um, so the controller nodes uh, form a quorum and one of the controller node then becomes the quorum leader or the active controller. And all the brokers then connect to this active controller to update the metadata or retrieve the metadata. And then the other controller nodes just simply follow the active controller and tries to keep up, up to date with the metadata updates. And if the controller active controller was to go away, uh, we need at least the majority of the controller, the other controller nodes to be able to maintain the quorum and also be able to uh, elect a new leader. So one of them will become the leader and then the brokers will reconnect to that. So if we, let's take an example again. Um, let's say if I have three controller nodes and controller zero is the active controller. And if we were to restart uh, controller one, we need to make sure controller two is up to date with the metadata topic. If it's fallen behind, then we won't be able to restart controller one. If we were to restart active controller zero, then we need to make sure both controller one and two have up to date with the metadata topic. If any one of them has fallen behind, then we won't be able to restart active controller. Okay, so we took a look at the safety checks that we do. And next we're gonna uh, go ahead and do the action. So the action of re restarting the pod uh, under the cover, we're just doing keep CTL delete pod. Uh, we wait for the pod to be deleted and then we wait for the new pod to become ready. And I also in the previous steps mentioned about uh, waiting for the pod to become ready uh, in case it was just restarted. So all of these waits have a timeout of five minutes by default, and this can be reconfigured using the streamc environment variable called operation timeout. So once we've done all the actions, then we will go ahead and complete the reconciliation. Uh, in the uh, success scenario, obviously all of the pods would be restarted and all of them will be in a healthy ready state. Uh, and in that case, the, the reconciliation will complete with successful result. But there are various scenarios that reconciliation will fail, uh, as you saw some of it earlier. So there are some non retrievable failures will cause the reconciliation to fail immediately. So one is uh, we cannot connect to Kubernetes API. Um, obviously, if we can't connect to Kubernetes API, there's not much we can do. Uh, we can't do anything with the pod. We can't check if the pod is ready or not, etc. And also, if we can't connect to Kafka agent to check the broker state metrics, 
um, as you saw earlier, that's quite important for uh, for checking the again the readiness of the broker uh, to see if it's doing local recovery, that kind of stuff. So it's really important that we uh, have the connection to Kafka agent. And if the pod is stuck and does not have the old revision, meaning that it's running with the desired version and configuration doesn't have any pending updates, then yeah, we're going to go ahead and fail the reconciliation. And there are some retriable failures um, that will eventually fail the reconciliation um, if the maximum number of attempts reached. So if that is if pod is not ready because it's doing log recovery. We saw that earlier. And if we can't connect to the pod using the admin client, and also the request to the admin API keeps failing. So as we saw earlier, that it's quite important um, to interact with the admin API and have the successful request um, you know, to get the Kafka configurations or to do the availability check, that kind of stuff. So it's quite important that we have this working. And if the pod never becomes ready. So we looked at various scenarios and uh, logic that um, Kafka Roller has. Uh, let's go through a quick example of a rolling update on a full cluster and have to see how that looks. So let's say I have a cluster of six nodes and three of those nodes are controller nodes. And actually one of them is mixed node, meaning that it's both controller and the broker. And controller two is the active controller. And I have three broker nodes to which uh, highlighted in red are unready. So we're going to take a look at controller zero first. And we find that pod is ready, can be connected, great. And we find that controller stream Z pod set was un annotated with manual rolling update. So that means all of the controller nodes would need to be restarted. So because it's controller node, we're going to do the quorum health check. If that's all good, then we're going to go ahead and restart. OK, let's say we restarted Kafka uh, controller 0 and it's ready. So we're going to move on to mixed 1. Again, exactly the same um, steps as controller 0, uh, except one uh, different thing, which is the availability check. So because it's both controller and a broker, uh, we also do the availability check before we restart. So if that's all good, then we go ahead and restart next one. And then uh, at, as, as last controller node, we uh, uh, check the active controller now. So again, exactly the same scenario. Um, but when we're doing the quorum health check for this node, we need to make sure both mix one and controller zero are um, have the up-to-date metadata topic. OK, so we have restarted all of the controller nodes because we restarted controller 2, uh, which was the con active controller. Now the active controller moved to controller 0. And then we're going to next check broker 3, which is one of the unready pods. OK, so pod is not ready. And we find that broker 3 is in a crash loop back off. Then we go ahead and check if it has, any, if it has an old revision. And if it, it and it does, therefore we need to go ahead and restart it. And then broker three comes back ready and great. So then we move on to the next unready broker, which is broker four. So this time pod is not ready, but it is not stuck. And so we're gonna just give it a chance to become ready in case it was just restarted. And we find that pod is doing a lock recovery. So we're gonna just apply some delay and retry this pod later. On the second retry, the pod is now ready. However, we can't connect to this pod. Therefore, we're going to just go ahead and restart this pod. OK, the broker forward then came back ready, so all good. And then now, finally, we're going to move on to broker 5. Broker 5 is ready and can be connected. Great. And we find that configuration has changed for this broker. And this configuration cannot be up updated dynamically. So we would need to restart this pod. And we do the availability check before we restart it. However, the broker four that was previously restarted hasn't caught up yet. That means that my topic partition would fall below the mean ISR uh, configuration, configured mean ISR if we restart broker five. Therefore, this availability check fails. And 
So we're going to just apply some delay and retry this later on. On the second retry, uh, broker five is ready, can be connected again. And then we find the configuration has changed, the same thing. And we do the availability check again. And we find that broker four has caught up now. So it's joined the ISR list. So it's all good. And availability check passes. And we go ahead and restart this broker. Okay, so this is a successful scenario where we were able to restart all of the pods successfully and apply the updates. And in this case, reconciliation will be completed with success result. Okay, so let's take a look at the shortcomings of Kafka Roller. Um, as I mentioned, it's a complex, as you can see, it's a complex component. It has a lot of uh, nested uh, loops and logics and decision different scenarios that it has to deal with. Um, so the one of the major uh, shortcoming is uh, that we restart one broker at a time. So it is the safest way of doing things, but uh, that makes the rolling update really slow in large clusters. So if you had a uh, cluster with a hundred of brokers, you know, the, the rolling update will, could take hours and hours, um, possibly. And even though we're doing this as minimal disruption as possible, it's, it's, it's still causing some level of disruption. And that means um, the longer the rolling update takes, your cluster will be in that vulnerable state longer as well. And the next thing is that the roller doesn't wait for partitions to be assigned back to the preferred leader after it gets restarted. And this can cause unnecessary amount of partition leader elections. And every time there's a new leader election, um, the clients will have to reconnect. So it is causing more disruption than, than necessary, basically. And this, the code for this component has grown really complex over the years. Uh, obviously, Kafka has been changing, so the Kafka roller had to adapt to that. And it has become so complex and not easy to grow and not easy to add new functionality. And this was the pain point when we were introducing support for craft. And there are still some edge cases for craft need, that need to be addressed. And it is not easy to address with the current state of the code. And the code at the moment is not really testable. Um, and therefore, we lack in test coverage. And we miss those edge cases because we're miss, missing um, lack in test coverage. Um, so that makes it even more difficult to uh, refactor this uh, component and make it better. So uh, that brings us to uh, Kafka Roller 2.0 that we introduce it. Um, so this is a new roller, a completely new uh, roller component, and aims to have simplified logic and has structured design resembling a finite state machine. And the proposal for this new roller is under review at the moment. So if you would like to go and learn about it, please go and check out the proposal. And we aim to enable this uh, new roller only for craft mode, so it wouldn't apply to the zookeeper mode. Um, and having simplified logic and uh, better code, uh, it, it will make it easier to add more changes later on as well. That's the aim. Um, which is really important for craft because, you know, craft is, is still new for us. Uh, as we learn more about it, we might have to make more changes to the roller. So, um, yeah. So when I say finite state machine, uh, so what I mean is that basically uh, the idea is to for each node to have a state and the roller collects the information from various sources and transition nodes state based on that information. And then it takes a specific actions based on the observed state. And these actions cause subsequent observations and then lead into state transitions. And this is a iterative process, uh, ensuring alignment of each node with the desired state. So it's just from high level, um, there's more details in the proposal for this. So let's take a look at the main new features that Kafka Roller 2.0 is bringing. So one is being able to restart brokers in parallel when the safety conditions are not violated. So on top of the availability check that we already do, 
um, we also will make sure the brokers we restarting together do not share partitions in common. So we, you know, uh, make sure the topic availability is not impacted. And user can define how many brokers they want to restart in parallel. And uh, this will be set to one by default, meaning by default, you have the original behavior of restarting one broker at a time. And this only applies to broker nodes. Um, so controller and the mix nodes will be restarted one, uh, restarted at one at a time. Because um, typically, you wouldn't have as many controller nodes as the brokers. Also, it's safer to restart one controller at a time uh, to have minimal impact on the quorum and the overall cluster stability. And then it's going to wait for the partitions to be assigned back to the preferred leaders uh, before we do more restarts. And that way, we cause less partition leader elections. And then because it's more simplified, uh, we'll be able to solve those edge cases I mentioned for craft uh, much easier with the new component. And uh, the aim is also to make this component much more testable so that we can increase the test coverage. Um, the last two is really development details. Uh, as a user, you would need to worry about these changes introduced to the code level. Uh, the main difference is really the ability to restart brokers at the same time and uh, triggering less preferred leader elections. Um, everything else remains the same, so don't worry. We, what we just learned in the session is still going to be useful. Um, what we just covered um, is uh, for the current roller still apply to the new roller. And this actually nicely summarizes what we learned in the session. And yeah, that brings me to the end. Um, Thank you so much for listening and yeah, I'll open up for questions. Thank you so much, Tina. That's yeah, very interesting, definitely. And we have quite a few different Q and A's. So um, the top one that's been voted is, is this process completely separate from the drain cleaner or is there any crossover between Kafka roller and drain cleaner? I believe it's completely separate. Yeah, I haven't worked on drain cleaner myself too much, so <laughs> I haven't come across it. That means I think it's completely separate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can actually add to that because I have played around with drain cleaner. So drain cleaner is focused on um, moving pods from nodes and, and making sure that it's safe to do that. Um, but yeah, although I guess they potentially could have had some logic in common, that they are completely separate components um, within Stringsy. So the next one we've got is, um, why do you restart controller pods first? Wouldn't the old controllers work with the newer regular brokers and it would be safer to do things like that? Um, yeah, so the reason for that was, um, as we saw, like we tried to recover the unhealthy nodes first. And if there was something wrong with the controller nodes, it's important that we go and fix the controller nodes first, because then we don't want to restart broker nodes in that and then cause more chaos. And from my experience, if the quorum is broken or something is not right with the controller nodes, brokers go into really strange state and yeah, so that was the main reason. Cool. Uh, and then the next one we've got is, um, could you make the waiting time between rolling different pods configurable so that I could introduce artificially longer delays, like for example, only rolling one pod every 10 minutes? Um, I guess you can play around with the operation timeout and reconciliation interval. So those are the two configurable values you can play around to make that happen, I think. Um, it looks like oh, somebody's commented who I guess has looked at drain cleaner says, apparently drain cleaner does involve invoke the manual rolling update via the annotation. So that will then hand off to the Kafka roller. Yeah, there are different reconcilers, um, not just the Kafka reconciler. There are different reconcilers within Streamsy that might go and 
do the um, use the manual rolling annotation to kick off the rolling update. So that will be the crossover. And then I think those are all the questions. There was one that was asked about wouldn't it be better to wait for the preferred leader election? Um, but obviously that's something that isn't done currently, but is coming in Kafka Roller version two. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has any other questions that you can think of, then um, feel free to post them there. But for now, I'll, I'll stop the broadcast and recording. So yeah, thank you again, Tina, for a lovely session. And we'll be back at... Can I uh, just mention one more thing? Yeah, yeah, um, go ahead. And um, if you came across any other pain points with the current roller, um, it, it can be part of the, the new roller and improve that situation. And, you know, you can bring that up in the proposal discussion as well. So that'd be really useful for us as well. Yeah, definitely. Oh, the other thing I was going to um, ask actually was, I believe there's a proof of concept for the new Kafka roller, right? So people could go and have a look at what the code might look like if they were interested. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we have the proof of concept already written. So once the proposal is um, accepted, um, that was that would be the code that you used for the real implementation. Awesome. Okay, just check we haven't had any more questions come in. Can't see any. Cool. So uh, yeah, we'll be back. Um, so the next session is going to start at 350 um, in GMT plus two. Um, and that's going to be modernizing new banks Kafka platform for the next 10 years, starting at 1 trillion messages per month. So we'll see you then. Thanks, everyone. Bye.